time for the procession of the bloody. Why, why does it sound like you're not?
please remain standing for the national anthem. Thank you. You may have your seats. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Let me pause to first say let me pause to first say congratulations to this graduating class of 2022. My assignment here is to pray, so we're going to do just that. Let us go before the Lord in prayer. Father God, we come before your holy presence. We say thank you for today. This is the day, God, that you have made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Father, we thank you for, for your grace and for your mercy on these young people's lives where you sustained and kept them through the tough nights, long nights, crying nights, God, and you have brought them to this moment. So we pause in this moment to say thank you, God. We thank you for, for, for the success of attaining this, this, this victory in the academic venture, Daddy God. And we thank you, God, even in this moment as we pause to celebrate that your presence, we welcome your presence in here, God, and that today will be one that is enjoyable, one that we share the joys, that, that we share the excitement, oh God. We give you thanks for such a momentous occasion as this, God. All the glory and all the honor is due to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
for your mercy never fails me all my days i've been held in your hands from the moment that i wake up until i lay my head oh i will sing of the goodness of god of God I love your voice you have led me through the fire in darkest nights you are close like no other I've known you as a father I've known you as a friend oh I will sing of the goodness of God yeah, yeah, yeah. And all, all my life, life you have, have been faithful. faithful You have been faithful All, all my life, life you have, have been so, so good With every breath that I am able Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God Your goodness is running after It's running after me Your goodness is running after It's running after me With my life laid down I surrender now I give you everything your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I surrender now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. And all my life you have been faithful, you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so Of the goodness of God. Yay. And all my life you have been faithful. Oh, yes, you have. All my life you have been so, so good. Every breath that I am Of the goodness of God, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. Come on, they do deserve a much better hand. Thank you. Good morning again. Isn't it good to be back at the graduation? All right, so give yourselves a round of applause. Come on. Yeah. My name is Michael Augustine, and? I am Mrs. Dorcas Francis Simon. 
But I didn't call a middle name for me. It's my whole name. Oh, okay. We are going to be your host for this ceremony. And um, apart from being the host, we crafted a few jokes. Some are going to be on staff. Some are going to be on students. And we reserve one, especially for someone in the audience. And um, we won't tell you what that surprise is. So just grab onto your seats. The individual is there. We've seen them already. Welcome for you. I'd like to invite to the podium at this time, Mr. Jan, Mr. Jan Gregoire. I refer to him as Dr. Jan, but before he comes, Jan is a dedicated individual who hails from the community of Galeo in Sufria. He previously attended the Sufria Primary School, where he developed a passion for social studies. At the DGS, Jan is described as cheerful, kind, and helpful. He always finds time to participate in various school activities. The 16-year-old in his free time enjoys venturing onto adventurous paths. Ladies and gentlemen, our salutatorian for 2022, Mr. Jan Gregor. Honorable Kent Edwards, Parliamentary Secretary in the Ministry of Health, Wellness and New Health Investment, and Mrs. Edwards. Mrs. Shonda Hyacinth, Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Education, Human Resource Planning and Vocational Training and National Excellence. Dr. Jeffrey Blaise, Chief Education Officer. Mrs. Nazarene William Teet, Senior Education Officer, for secondary schools. Mr. Anthony Edwards, featured speaker. Miss Edina Dalton, principal of the Dominica Grammar School. Pastor Lester George. Mr. Aina Alexander, PTA president, sponsors, class of 2022. Dominica Grammar School staff, PTA executive. Parents, guardians, and well wishes to media, good morning. I bid you warm welcome greetings. On behalf of the Dominica Grammar School's class of 2022, it is indeed a great honor to represent the graduating class in welcoming you to this graduation ceremony. This is the day that the Lord has made, and today, my fellow graduates, we have embarked on yet another important chapter of our lives. As we welcome our distinguished guests here in celebration with us, it can only be attributed to the hard work and dedication of all concerned. Our journey here at this prestigious learning institution was no smooth sailing. A week after we walked through the gates of the school, Hurricane Maria devastated our island and had a major impact on our livelihoods and education. This did not hold us back, but strengthened our resolve to be better than our best. From 2020, we did not escape the COVID-19 pandemic that transformed the education sector globally, forcing us to adapt to virtual learning. Despite the challenges faced, we forged friendships and created happy memories, memories which will forever be etched in our minds. Look at us, here we are, standing firm and tall, class of 2022. <clears throat> to our parents, guardians, and teachers, you have guided us and given us the unwavering support. 
officials from the Ministry of Education, guest speaker, principal and staff, benefactors, and well wishers. Once again, a cheerful welcome to the Dominica Grammar School's Class of 2022 graduation ceremony. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jan. I'd like to acknowledge uh, a few of our sponsors, and I'll be doing that as we move along because we have quite a long list who've made this uh, event today possible. The DGSPTA, Archipelago Trading and Company Limited, the Central Cooperative Credit Union, Domlek, Dowasco, Jays Limited, Josephine Gabriel and Company Limited, the West Coast Cooperative Credit Union, and Premier Computing. Miss Edna Doughton has joined a group of elite Dominican women who took the reins of principalship of the Dominica Grammar School. Mrs. Frances Harris acted as principal for one year. Mrs. Josephine Josephs acted as principal for one year. And Alicia Jean-Jacques was the only appointed principal of the DGS. Ms. Doughton has now joined this elite group of Dominican women and Although she served as deputy principal for a number of years, we'd like to welcome her as our new principal to deliver her first graduation principal's address, Ms. Edina Doughton. Good morning. Good morning. Honorable Kent Edwards, Parliamentary Secretary in the Ministry of Health, Wellness and New Health Investment, and Mrs. Edwards. Dr. Jeffrey Blaise, Chief Education Officer. Mrs. Nazarene William Teet, Senior Education Officer, Secondary Schools. Mr. Anthony Edwards, Featured speaker, Pastor Lester George, Mr. Anna Alexander, PTA president, all the sponsors who are here with us, class of 2022, Dominica Grammar School staff, PTA executive members, parents, guardians, and well wishers, the media. This morning, as we stand here and we set off another 64 young persons out into the world of work, into the unknown, I want to say that it seemed hard to believe that you started off at a sprint, and indeed it started off at a sprint, and it seemed to have left many of us still trying to catch our breath. A year of challenges, it did appear daunting at times, yet we faced a huge mountain that lay ahead of us to climb and indeed conquered its summit. Steadfast, resolved and determined, we focus on our goal, keeping together and working together. It was the best of times and indeed it was the worst of times. The COVID-19 pandemic has kept you home for the entire first semester and almost that of the second. This fact alone has set you apart from all classes that have graduated from this school, for you are indeed the first ever group of high school students in the history of this island to have attended school completely online. I still remember hearing some students saying, for the first time, I'm dying to go back to school. Fortunately, we have kept this pandemic under control and managed to make it back to school for the remaining two weeks of the second term 
and six weeks of the third two. I am indeed honored to be part of this big moment of yours. Times of change are perfect for reflection, so let us reflect on the road we have trekked so far. Forced to attend school online, we were challenged to keep school attendance up. Many of our students were home alone and would not attend school. And sad to say, we have lost some students who along the way dropped out. At this point, I want to thank the Ministry of Education, Human Resource Development, Vocational Training, and National Excellence for distributing devices and in some cases providing internet access at a low cost, allowing our students from low-income homes to access internet, thus enabling them to attend school. Overnight, people who have traditionally been teaching in physical classrooms all had to learn how to manipulate new technological tools and move to online to survive a pandemic. For some teachers and students, the move to a virtual learning environment was a very smooth one. It highlighted their talents, creativity, in the imaginative and innovative ways in which they conducted online instruction. Others became learners and were even taught by their students how to manipulate the online platform. Although the students were learning remotely and could not physically interact with their teachers, many, students sought to, many teachers sorry, sought to create a virtual classroom that reduced significantly the isolation that was commonly felt by students, one of the downsides of remote learning. Since remote learning required almost every teacher to have live sessions as frequently as possible throughout the day, the school administration faced the challenge on how to make this possible. We did not have sufficient rooms to provide each teacher with the workspace they needed. And not only the lack of the physical space was an obstacle to be cleared, but whatever the solution, adherence to COVID protocols was the single most critical factor for we could not afford to lose any member of staff to the virus. We definitely had to avoid overcrowding in the staff room. After all, we are a staff of 70. The success of online instruction greatly depends on a reliable internet service. And herein lay the next obstacle. All 70 teachers operating from the same base and all online at the same time meant regular drops in the internet service, which affected the quality of instruction. The situation had to be worked out with perfection. The school administration made the decision that saw teachers working from home and some working from school, the school. The heavy presence of the pandemic was at play in every aspect of school life. No decision could be taken without consideration given to the fact that we were operating in a pandemic era. Yet, we had to keep school activities going. Relaxation of the restrictions imposed by the Ministry of Health afforded the school an opportunity to host its first General Assembly with the school full population in attendance. The morning of April 13th, 2022, hundreds of bright faces, uniform press, excitedly entered the gates and in quiet anticipation awaited the bell to, begin to signal the start of the term assembly. A first face-to-face, -face, one after being isolated for almost two semesters. A few parents scattered here and there eagerly awaited to be part of the activity. They too yearned for the usual first and last day that had been denied them by the pandemic. It was a momentous occasion. Deserving students who had performed creditably were awarded and the entire occasion was shared with parents live via the school's Facebook page. The return to face-to-face -to -face afforded the school the opportunity to partner with the University of the West Indies in order to allow the four farmers over a period of two days 
to attend a conference for emerging leaders at the open campus site. Over the two-day period, students were engaged in sessions on team building, developing leadership potential, stress management, self-esteem, effective public speaking, and meeting management. This opened the doorway to offer a similar opportunity to our food farmers' career week. The week was observed in the month of May. The three-day activity consisted of workshops, sessions, and had as its main feature a career field, in short, a job field. Staff, parents, MOE officials, and members of the public who visited the field labeled it as a resounding success. All this attributed to the hard work and commitment of Ms. Giselle Mondesi and her team. That very day, students were given the opportunity to display in manner of dress the career they intended to pursue. The success of this activity and the high level of participation by staff and students led to teachers and students making requests for them to be exposed to an activity of that nature. The second farmers got their turn when the opportune moment presented itself on the big day of the CSEC exams. The majority of our second formers turned out for the field trip, which had various stops on its way, one of which was the Kalinago Territory. The activity organized by the Humanities Department had to do with a school project, which was part of students' assessment. Permit me at this juncture to highlight the school's participation in a few extra and co-curricular activities. If we look at our program, and we look at the section on the back page, and you'll follow with me, we have highlighted sorry, the activities, events, and achievements for the school year 2021-2022. We participated in the netball, basketball, and volleyball festivals that were held. On the 18th festival, we came in third place. On the 20th basketball, boys festival, sorry, boys basketball in the festival, we placed fifth. Volleyball, the girls placed seventh, the boys placed seventh as well. In cricket, the under 20 boys came second place. Nine of our students represented Dominica in the first ever fraternity games in Martinique. Omari Talbert, Ijani Richards, the won bronze in long jump. Omari won silver in discus. Canara White, Laquante Alphonse, Michaela Joseph, Kevin Lefam, Malakai Labad, Dale Xavier, and Michaela Anthony. Our students also had the opportunity to participate in the International Organization for Migration. Two of our students participated in this, Shamia Daru in the lower secondary category and came second place. Jan Gregor, who just addressed you, also came second place in the upper secondary. We got the opportunity to take part in the 80s Spelling Bay competition Sienna Joseph and Kishma Theophil placed second. Abby Williams took the opportunity to take part in the Youth Ambassador Program, which will be held in Washington in the US of A in August. To you, graduates, young men, sorry, young ladies, seated at the front, we are immeasurably proud of each and every one of you. There were those of you who seemed to have wings, and you just soared over the challenges. 
I need you to take a very close look at the cover page of your program. This day will be a blur of memories for you. You may not remember a lot of what happened. Some things will stay with you, some things will not be captured in your memory. And I want you to notice the solidness of the rock. And as your graduation theme says, states, don't be afraid of fear because it sharpens you, it challenges you, it makes you stronger. Let this rock represent the one who is the source of life, the one to whom you can turn. This is the God of all creation. And as Psalm 118 verse 6 states, the Lord is on your side. You will not be afraid. What, ma what can man do to you? Having Yahweh on your side is more than enough for you to never be afraid. Don't be afraid of fear. Remember, it sharpens you, it challenges you, it makes you stronger. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Doughton. Let's give Ms. Doughton another round of applause. It does take a very strong, determined, and sterling leader to carry a school through such challenging times. And we must say that you've done excellently well. Thank you. The Ministry of Education wishes to apologize for the absence of Mrs. Chandler Hyacinth. She's unable to be with us because of an emergency. At this time, I'd like to invite Dr. Jeffrey Blaise to do the presentation of diplomas. Let's welcome Dr. Jeffrey Blaise. Graduating with honors, Cassia Cadet. Kenny Edwards. <laughs> Merits, Giovanni Danielle. Chantez Davis. The Wind Desiree. Shireen Gregoire. <laughs> Yan Gregoire. Stephanie Joachim. Jaziel Myers. Jaziel. 
Eva Prince. Pooja Sadarangani. Abby Williams. Jovel Abraham. And we are presenting at this time our students graduating with passes. Jonathan Alexander. Justin Alexander. <laughs> Cardini Andrew. Ras Mission Andrew <laughs> Abigail Augustine Tishon Bellot. <laughs> Sahara Bowers. Alexis Carty. Malik Charles. Mario Christopher. Azima Kofi. <laughs> Kinan Daru.
Kerika Ziole. Felicia Esprit. Wanik Esprit. Malik George. His twin sister, Michaela George. Graham <laughs> Mandy Hall Nehemiah Isles. Sinai James. Alisa Jones. <laughs> Neza Joseph. Yolania Joseph. <laughs> Megan Labadee. Chesley Larond. Martha Larond. Monique Laurent. <laughs> Ma
Markel Lawrence. Josia Landor. <laughs> Debria Matthew. Jaden Matthew. <laughs> Kwame Maxime. Dante Mitchell. <laughs> Sabria Moransi. Tishon Moses. <laughs> Shemaya Ofa. Malachi Pasco <laughs> Phil Pasco Dwight Peanard. Wanik Prosper. Jasnik. Jasnik. Oh, sorry. Jasnik Prosper. <laughs> Andel Robin. Rikiana Rule. Shidoshi Samuel. Emilio Sanford.
Niall Tate. And Timothy. Jaime Toussaint. Sinora Toussaint. Kaina Victor. Adonijah Xavier. Ladies and gentlemen, we present to you the graduating class of 2022. You may have your seats. And now we move on to an exciting part of our program, which is the presentation of awards. Dr. Jeffrey Bless, we invite you once again. You've got your work cut out today, sir. <laughs> At this juncture, we wish to recognize some of our sponsors had it not been for your contribution, perhaps our graduation would not have been as exciting as it is. Mr. Ray Francis, Miss Marina Isaac, Mr. Samuel Henderson, Mrs. Judith Francis, Mrs. Tammy Jean-Jacques. Now for the awards. The 2022 valedictorian, Mr. Kenny Edwards. And, and the 2022 valedictorian, Miss Cassia Cadet. <laughs> the 2022 salutatorian, Mr. Jan Gregoire. He's sometimes called Dr. Jan Gregoire. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the 2022 Student of the Year, Mr. Kenny Edwards. The Mr. Dennison Mitchell's Award for Academic Achievement, Chantez Davis. <laughs> Mr.
Mr. Brenton Hillier's Award for Academic Achievement, Stephanie Joachim. Mr. Anthony Edwards Award for Academic Achievement, Doreen Desiree. <laughs> Jay's Award for Academic Achievement and Sportsmanship, Kenny Edwards. And you may remain, Kenny, because you may remain. The Jays Award for Discipline, Kenny Edwards. The Geneva Marshall Award for Discipline, Jovel Abraham. Mr. James Rodney's award for responsibility and dependability, Abby Williams. Mr. Kalyon Peters Award for Responsibility and, Depend and Dependability, Jovelle Abraham. Mr. Colbert Bertrand's Award for Responsibility and Dependability, Abigail Augustine. <laughs> Father Peter Hill, Mr. Ray Francis, and Mr. Jonathan Bellot's Award. They call themselves the Three Wise Men. And this award is for aspiring leaders, male, Derwin Desiree, and female, Abigail Augustine. Bubbles Award for Effort and Consistency, Jaziel Myers. <laughs> Mr. Derek Medas Award for Steadfastness in Rising Above Challenges, Abby Williams. And if you want to know what perseverance looks like, what steadfastness looks like, that's the face of it. If steadfastness was a person, Abby would be the face. Miss Maria, Miss Maria John Baptist Award for overcoming obstacles and persevering to achieve, Shireen Gregoire. The Class of 87 Award for Overcoming Obstacles and Persevering to Achieve, Stephanie Joachim and Sanchez Davis.
The school's award for service to the school, Kenny Edwards. Cassia Cadet. Abby Williams. Jan Gregoire. Dwight Pinard and Alexis Carty. <laughs> Kenny, Cassia, Abby, Jan, Dwight, Alexis. Continue. Yes, at the end, right there. In the meantime, I will read some of our sponsors. Mr. Anthony Edwards, Mr. Brendan Williams, Mrs. Shanna Hamilton, Ms. Genevieve Marshall, Ms. Trennis Hamilton, Mr. Brenton Hilaire, Mr. Edmund Laville. And we continue with the awards. The Mr. Augustus Etienne's Award for Excellent School Spirit, Kenny Edwards. Mr. Shadrach Burton's Award for Artistic Excellence, Cassia Cadet. <laughs> the PTA Award for Academic Achievement, Shantez Davis. The PTA Award for Conduct and Deportment, Eva Prince. <laughs> and Kerika Dione. Thank you, Dr. Blaise. You may. Oh, we have one more. Before I bring up Mr. Kenny Edwards, there's a little backstory to Kenny's attendance at the DGS. I don't know if Ms. Duran remembers, but it was nearing September and Kenny was not registered at school. And we thought that we should try to get him into the Dominica Grammar School after having spoken to his dad and he was not accepted. And we thought there, there was no way we were, we were not going to let this young man enter the DGS so after several rejections from the grammar school, we decided to trot up, well, I decided to trot up to Cornwall Street. And I met with Mrs. Tit, I don't know if she remembers. And she said, you serious now, Mr. Augustine? I said, yes. She said, no, go back. And I went back. And again, I negotiated. And Kenny got registered into the Dominica Grammar School. And today he stands as our valedictorian. Not that he was not registered at a school, but he wanted to attend the DGS and not go to the Casper Secondary. But Kenny is a quiet, unassuming young man with strength of mind and character. Kenny Edwards is from the village of Laplin 
where he attended the Jones Bopier Primary School. In September 2017, he began his secondary education at the DGS, where he has consistently been on the school's honor roll and is committed to doing well. At a very young age, he enjoyed participating in sporting activities, including cricket and football. And he said if he does not hold a bat to a ball, he feels incomplete. So we may very well look forward to maybe one day uh, a West Indies champion there. While he enjoyed participating in sports, he was also fascinated by science. So it was no wonder that he chose chemistry, physics, and biology for study during his last two years of high school. Kenny's hope is to be a medical doctor. Although he's not sure he will specialize, although he's not sure what he will specialize in just yet. Ladies and gentlemen, our first valedictorian for 2022, Mr. Kenny Edwards. Honorable Ken Edwards, Parliamentary Secretary in the Ministry of Health, Wellness and New Health Investment, and Mrs. Edwards, Dr. Jeffrey Blaze, Chief Education Officer, Mrs. Nazareel William Tit, Senior Education Officer of Secondary Schools, Mr. Anthony Edwards, Featured Speaker, Ms. Edina Doughton, Principal of the Dominica Grammar School, Pastor Lester George, Mr. Inner Alexander, PTA President, Sponsors, mm -hmm. Class of 2022, Dominica Grammar School staff, PTA Executive Members, Parents, Guardians, and Well-Wishers, and also the media. Good morning. I stand here before you as valedictorian of the Class of 2022. Although I share this honor with a fellow student, I am nonetheless extremely proud that I was able to achieve such an honor. 34 years ago, my father, Honorable Ken Edwards, was also the valedictorian of the class of 1998. <laughs> I entered the Dominica Grammar School five years ago with hopeful anticipation that this journey was going to be an exciting and interesting one. But it was more difficult than I imagined. When I began, I pictured it very simply, coming to school, making friends, doing well in my subjects, and returning home. I thought it would come with ease, but it didn't. Performing my best did not come easy, and interaction with my peers was challenging. However, I did not let this remove me from my path to success. I continued to work hard and tried my best to get assignments and studying done, even if it meant late nights or early mornings. Despite being successful in my academics, I lacked the social experience. I pondered and hoped for the answers to unexpectedly enter my mind. They didn't. But as time went by, things changed for the better. I noticed that my performance, both academically and in sports, opened up my social life in high school. How, oh, you may ask? Well, for one, I wasn't boastful, or talkative for that matter. But my peers would sometimes request my help, and I willingly shared my knowledge with them. Kwame, Chantez, Sabria, Stephanie, Derwin, Dwight, Michaela, Alexis, Alisa, Wanik, Andel, Tishon. I never thought that I would have cultivated such good friendships, which at first seemed impossible. Yeah. Fellow graduates, it is well known that engaging in sports 
particularly cricket, is what completes me. Taking part in sports really helped me, both physically and mentally, shaping me to be this holistic individual that I am still working on. We face challenges and interruptions, which included Hurricane Maria in 2017 and in 2020, the coronavirus. When Hurricane Maria struck, we barely knew each other's names or either our teachers' names, matter of fact. When we were finally able to start school, some in, sometime in, Jan in January of 2018, our school hours were cut short because we had to share our space. From the third week or so in March 2020, up to the end of the school year, we got a small taste of online learning, but we were not prepared for what was to come. It was a blessing that we were able to have a full year of four form face to face. This, I believe, truly helped us. After all, we know what four form signifies for us at the GGS. It is here that we began, as we locally say, to tie our waist. <laughs> Midway September 2021, school began, but alas, it wasn't what we knew or yearned for. We began online learning. These were very tough times. We had to deal with no internet access, connectivity issues, poorly working devices, no devices, shared devices, technological issues, inability to focus on screens for long periods of time, distractions at home, and isolation. It means that we were away from our friends and the reality of spending our last year of high school online was not, a pleasant, was not pleasant to think of at all. Thankfully, as we all know, we were able to, able to go back face to face in March 2022. A very short stint of face to face learning, but one which was appreciated by most, if not all, of the formers. During that time of online learning, we had to improvise and use our strengths to our own advantage, and so we did. The fact that we are sitting here today is testimony of our strength and determination. I've made many memories throughout this journey, both good and bad. One of these memories was during school exams. Hmm. This moment, well, I could not believe it. I won't say too much, but it was an amusing incident. Just to jog your memory, fellow graduates, just know by now that everyone should have their old pencil in one piece. Remember earlier on, I mentioned my passion for sports. Not only do I love sports, but I played sports and was pleased to represent my school. My progress in football, cricket, athletics could not be matched, and these were experiences I will never forget. There were tough times. We lost a few events, but when we won, we won substantially. Thanks to my coaches, Mr. Hamilton and Mr. Lee, and teammates for making his time at high school exciting and entertaining. It is said that while some students experience difficulty balancing their athletics commitment to academics, many student, students actually find that the high degree of organization required to accomplish both can push them to be highly successful in both areas. To those of you out there who still don't believe that, just look at me standing here before you. Yeah. We are here because we showed strength and determination, and we never gave up. There are some of our friends and classmates who are not here with us today to celebrate this momentous occasion. Somewhere along the way, they gave up. I wish them well. To the principal and staff, may the, Lord, may the blessings of the Lord be always upon you all. To our individual teachers, thank you for the lessons you taught us in managing our time efficiently to get things done. The memories you gave us, 
and most importantly, remaining patient with us when things were difficult. Permit me to mention the names of those teachers who impacted my life one way or the other. Mrs. Masley, Ms. D. Durant, Mr. Augustine, Mr. Graham, and Mrs. Gregor. Permit me also to say special thanks, special thanks, special thanks to our principal, Ms. Alisa Jajak, who played a pivotal role during my time here at DGS. My parents are my greatest blessings. I thank you for the values you have installed in me. I owe a great deal of my success to both of you, for you have been by my side every step of the way. Thank you for the never-ending support. <laughs> to my friends, thanks for creating wonderful memories that will stay with me forever. We created friendships that will last a lifetime. My fellow graduates, you do not have to be perfect. I am not. I have failed, and yes, I missed a deadline or two. <laughs> I only did things differently. As we continue to follow our passions and to pursue what life has ahead of us, let's not be fearful. Don't be afraid of fear because it sharpens you, it challenges you, it makes you stronger, as Edward Helms once said. As I depart this podium, let me leave you with a few words of Leila Delia. Grapes must be crushed to make wine. Diamonds are formed under pressure. Olives are pressed to release oil. Seeds grow in the darkness. Class of 2022. Whenever you feel crushed, under pressure, pressed, or in darkness, you are in a powerful place of transformation. God bless. Stay safe. Keep well. Thank you. Is that a signal that we can end at this time? <laughs> That's it. Thank you very much, Kenny. But, you know, you remember I said we had a couple jokes, right? You all are ready? Okay. We would like to invite Mrs. Tit to the podium for the presentation of the sports prizes. The Mrs. Shana Hamilton's sports, Special Sports Award goes to Neza Joseph. <laughs> Mr. Brendan Williams Award for Male Sports Oh, sorry, for Male Sports Personality of the Year, Kian Daru. The Miss Trennies Hamilton's Award for Female Sports Personality of the Year, Alexis Carty.
Mr. Timius Galway's Award for Football, Kenny Edwards. Premier Computing Award for Netball, Josia Lendo. And she also gets the Mr. Robert Gist Award for Volleyball, Josia Lendo. Mr. Quentin Gregoire's Award for Basketball, male, Jaim Tuse, and female, Alexis Carty. Mr. Augustus Rivier's Award for Track and Field, male, Kenan Daru, and female, Abigail Augustine.
Archipelago Trading's Prize for Agricultural Science, Kinan Daru. The Domlex Prize for Electricity and Electronic Technology, Justin Alexander. The class of 1992, Miss Floria Fountains Prize for Office Administration, Miss Abby Williams. <laughs> Mr. Samuel Henderson's Prize for Technical Drawing, Derwin Desiree. Mr. Edmonds Laville Prize for Technical Drawing, Emilio Sanford. <laughs> Miss Katie Julian's Prize for Food and Nutrition and Health, Jovel Abraham. The Miss Sharon Lawrence Prize for Family and Resource Management, Cassia Cadet. <laughs> the Mr. Mervyn Anthony's Prize for Industrial Technology, Building and Furniture, Stephanie Joachim. The Mr. Benton Wikes Prize for Motor Vehicle Repair, Jaim Tuse. <laughs> Mr. Thomas Walsh's Prize for Motor Vehicle Repair, Mario Christopher. Mr. Brent Williams Prize for Physical Education and Sports, Sinora Tuse. Miss Atenia Tulos Prize for Visual Arts, Azima Coffee. PQ four seven five. Would like you to move your vehicle at this time, please. PQ475.
Mr. Stevenson, Hyacinth Prize for Visual Arts, Cassia Cadet. Cassia, you may remain. The Dawasco Prize for History, Cassia Cadet. Cassia also receives the Marita Hyacinth University of the Southern Caribbean Excellence in History Award. And she is sashed. The Miss Natasha Jones' Prize for Geography, Kenny Edwards. The West Coast Cooperative Credit Union Prize for Social Studies, Jan Gregoire. Yan, we'd like you to stay. Mr. Ray Francis Prize for Principles of Accounts, Yan Gregoire. And Ms. Anika Andrews Prize for Principles of Business, Yan Gregoire. Okay, we move on to the form prizes. Form 5-1, Ms. Cassim Jones Prize for Academic Excellence, Abby Williams. Resonated Designs Award for Application, Shireen Gregoire. <laughs> Mr. Charlton's Bruni's Prize for Conduct and Department, Shireen Gregoire. Cleopatra and Chris Carrots Prize for School Spirit, Neza Joseph. From 5 2, Miss Judy Francis Prize for Conduct and Deportment, and Timothy. Mr. Daniel Reed's prize for school spirit, Josia Lendor. We'd like a little more energy in your applause. Are you guys tired? From 5-3, Miss Tyson Academic Excellence, Cassia Cadet. Ms. Mariana's Isaac Prize for application, Azima Kofi.
Mr. Mr. Daniel Rivier's Prize for Conduct and Deportment, Sabria Moranzi. And Miss Tammy Jajak's Prize for School Spirit, Dewey Yuseb. Desiree. So, Desiree. How did I even say you, Zeb? She's the one that's getting tired. <laughs> From 5 4. Again, Mrs. Cassia Davids Price for Academic Excellence, Kenny Edwards. Mrs. Jeanette Raffles Prize for application, Shantes Davis. <laughs> Ms. Daisy Williams Prize for conduct and deportment, Jovel Abraham. The Mr. Irwani Simons Prize for School Spirit, Abigail Augustine. Thank you, Dr. Blaise. All right, we are very pleased to have a second valedictorian, and that is the person of Cassia Cadet. <laughs> Cassia Cadet is a 16-year-old student of the Dominica Grammar School. Before attending the Dominica Grammar School, she attended the Goodwill Primary, where she graduated as the valedictorian and won several academic awards. Upon her entry at the DGS, she consistently landed on both the principal and vice principal's honors on a roll. Academically, she excels at history, Spanish, arts, but history is her favorite. In her spare time, she enjoys reading and drawing and is personally drawn to both mediums of self-expression. Her major goals for the future include becoming a successful artist and writer whilst also developing her business skills. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you our second valedictorian, Ms. Cassia Cadet. Honorable Kent Edwards, Parliamentary Secretary in the Ministry of Health, Wellness and New Health Investment and Mrs. Edwards. Mrs. Chandler Hyacinth, Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Education, Human Resource Planning, Vocational Training and National Excellence. Dr. Jeffrey Blaise, Chief Education Officer. Mrs. Nazarene William Teat, Senior Education Officer, Secondary Schools. Mr. Anthony Edwards, featured speaker, Ms. Edina Doughton, Principal Dominica Grammar School, Pastor Lester George, Mr. Ann Anna Alexander, PTA President, sponsors, Class of 2022, Dominica Grammar School staff, PTA executive members, parents, guardians, well wishes, and the media. I thank you all for being here today to share this special moment with us. I remember when I first started my first year at the Dominica Grammar School, and these days seem so far away to me. 
From the very start of this five-year journey, we were hit with obstacles that seemed designed to bend our determination and dim our light. Personally, I entered high school defeated, as I wasn't able to achieve the scholarship that I thought that I'd worked so hard for. At that time, primary school seemed to me like the end of my potential for academic growth. A few weeks into it, however, my perspective shifted completely. No, I had a reason to work hard, and my previous failure became a guide on how to do better. We as a class faced many struggles together, from the devastation that was Hurricane Maria to the emergence of a worldwide pandemic. Online school was a struggle in itself. We had to learn to use Google Classroom and had to deal with faulty devices and bad internet. The lack of face-to-face -face interactions greatly affected our ability to learn and understand, and a lot of students had at-home duties to perform. These hurdles had effects on us mentally, physically, and socially. Some of us lost loved ones, others the security of a home and stable finances. But despite this, we proved our resilience, and today is proof of that. Today, we sit here not as the people who walked into those gates for the first time, but as young adults and Dominica Grammar School's graduating class of 2022, a group of determined and devoted students ready to encounter the world. Since entering high school, we've shared so many memories here together, like the hanging Play-Doh incident of 2-4, or the salt incident of 3-4. This journey wasn't just about learning. This was about discovering your potential, gaining new experiences, making new friends, and most importantly, learning to trust yourself. We did not get here simply on our own merit, though. In some way, each of us has received help from someone in our lives. Firstly, to the teachers of the Dominica Grammar School, on behalf of the entire graduating class of 2022, I extend my deepest gratitude. You truly served as beacons of hope to many of us during our online experience. You were under as much pressure as the rest of us, but still managed to lighten up the mood in, for many, a period of darkness. I would also like to thank all the parents here today. At the beginning of the pandemic, some of you lost your jobs or were not able to work due to lockdowns. Despite the financial struggles that must have emerged, however, not many of us can say that we truly felt the impact. This is due to the sacrifices you made to ensure that your children got through the rough patch. To that, I thank you. Now, I want to give special thanks, thank yous to special people. Firstly, I would like to thank my parents for being by my side every step of the way. To my mother, you were always a shoulder to lean on and encouraged me to always shoot for the stars and to settle for nothing less. You helped me realize my potential and then ensured that I knew that I always had someone to confide in. I truly appreciate all the sacrifices that you have made up to this point, and I want you to know that none of this would have been possible without you. <laughs> to my father, you have always influenced every decision in my life. Thank you for making sure that I always knew my worth and for pushing me to exceed my limits. You remind me that hard work pays off because without your push, I would not be standing here today. I would also like to thank Ms. Hamilton and Mr. Dennis for being my number one supporters. Thank you for the hours of your personal time that was spent ensuring that I had a good foundation to move forward. To Mr. Gabriel John Baptist, my art would be nowhere where it is today if not for your continuous support and encouragement. You believed that I could do great things and in the process got me to believe as well. And for that, I thank you. I thank all of you from the bottom of my heart. To my fellow graduates, I would like to share with you a word from one of my favorite entertainers, Jovan Bridges. When you go out into the world, I want you to try hard, I want you to swing big, but I want you to fail. Because it's through these trials and errors that we learn to become the people we are meant to be. The biggest hindrance to success in this life is the strive for perfection. You're young, 
go out, try new things, and don't be afraid to make mistakes. Because it's only then that you will find the path that you are truly meant to be on. I also want to remind you that you should focus on yourself. The path that you choose will be yours and yours only. The biggest influence on what you decide to do should be your own aspirations and values, not that of anyone else's. Put your happiness and success first and always remember who you are. So here's to the graduating class of 2022 and the bright future that I know we all hold. I thank you. Thank you, Cassia. Cassia, you didn't thank Google and cut and paste and, yeah? Yeah, but there's a line that struck me though, um, that it was equally difficult for, for the teachers. I'm, I'm sure you can remember the number of you, the number of parents that just popped into your camera. You know, because we were not, we did not only teach those guys, we taught their moms, their dads, their cousins, those who did the babysitting. I'll never forget, Pooja, mother listened to me all the time. I think, and I remember the day when Alexis Carty's mother popped and said, what kind of music Mr. Playing for you, Diana? <laughs> so we were very much aware that when we taught online, that we were teaching sometimes your entire household. They listened, and it was, it was a challenge, but they eventually saw that we were doing a, an excellent job. Thank you, Cassia. Anthony Davids. Son Edwards is a 30-year-old Dominican-born technology entrepreneur and an alumnus of the Dominica Grammar School. Mr. Edwards has built technology solutions for different companies in London, Uganda, India, and Dominica. In 2020, he returned to Dominica to start an e-commerce company called ShopDM with another DGS schoolmate, Gandhi Robin. Shop DM partners with Dominican stores and sells their products online. So you can go on to Shop DM and shop from Astafans or Brands Mac and then get the shopping delivered to you to Portsmouth or any other part of Dominica, but for Portsmouth for only $11. Before returning home, he was Chief Technology Officer at Borisha Technologies, a fine tech startup working between London and Uganda. He holds a Master's in Business Administration and a Master in Computer Science from the University of Oxford. He believes that Caribbean, the Caribbean's development will be driven by homegrown entrepreneurship, and he has returned home to contribute to that. Ladies and gentlemen, our feature speaker, Mr. Anthony Davidson Edwards. Um, oh, all right. uh, good morning, everyone. Um, thank you so much for, uh, for that warm introduction. And um, thank you for the opportunity to speak here. Um, honestly, I've been listening to these these students that are um, coming out, you know, coming out to grammar school, and I feel like y'all should be, you know, y'all should be the ones up here giving me the speech because, I mean, even some of the content from Cassia's speech, uh, it's, you know, it's exactly what I'm going to, going to go into here. So thanks again, and, you know, I'll try to do justice. Um, all right, so, so yeah, first of all, warm greetings. So um, good morning to everyone in the, in the audience, um, to the students, first of all, uh, to, the, um, to the officials here, the, the teachers and the parents that have been, you know, talking them along. Um, yeah, so I've been asked to speak to you about fear today. Um, so yeah, today's, fear, today's theme is don't be afraid of fear because it sharpens you, it challenges you, it makes you stronger. Um, now, I was thinking about it for a while, you know, having been invited to give this speech, and I'm like, you know, what, can I, what could I say that would be useful to you students on the subject of fear? Um, 
Well, so you heard my introduction. Um, there's lots of impressive sounding names in there, top universities, exciting career, etc. Um, but that's me at 30. Um, so now I want you to imagine me at 16. Um, you know, sitting just where you are right now, and I'm um, graduating from grammar school. Um, so, <laughs> what do you think 16-year-old me was afraid of? What do you think my fears were? Uh, I, I, I really wish I could take suggestions here, but all right, so based on the introduction, you might think, you know, I was always planning things out, and um, um, maybe I was afraid of the challenge of getting into the top universities, maybe I was afraid of what it might take to start a great company, um, but no, <laughs> my fears were not about university at all. Instead, my fears were around, you know, oh God, I don't have a date to prom. Um, is everyone going to laugh at me? You know, my fears were wrong, like, what will my parents think if, um, if I don't get top grades at CXC, you know? And um, how do people, you know, how do I get people to think of me as cool and attractive? So <laughs> my fears were pretty far from Oxford, pretty far from, you know, everything that seems impressive about me today. Um, but instead, like many of you, um, Many of you graduating right now, all of those fears were about social acceptance. Um, so it's acceptance by my friends, it's acceptance um, by my schoolmates, um, acceptance by girls, acceptance by my parents. Um, and you know, in writing this, I try to put myself in your shoes, and you know, I, I'd, imagine, I'd imagine a lot of you are going through a version of that right now. You know, you're, you're, you're jumping out of grammar school and you're going to have to make a set of decisions that are really to, you know, structure what your life is going to be. And, you know, our society can probably do a way better job at preparing you to make those decisions. Um, so let's bring that back to fear. Um, when we talk about fear, the first thing that jumps to mind is external threats. Um, like meeting a shark in the water. Uh, but like I just described to you, most of my um, fears at your age and even today were internal fears. Um, there's wrong how you relate to the people around you. And what I have found in my life is that those fears don't make you stronger. Um, they are not fears that make you bigger. They are fears that make you smaller. Because fears around acceptance always push you to conform. Um, rather than be your authentic self. Um, and the really dangerous thing about those types of fears um, is fears around acceptance is that if you allow them to, you know, you will constantly make other people happy. You will constantly satisfy other people, but never yourself. And again, the reason this is key, you know, if just, you know, I mean, come on, I know you all won't take everything out of this. Again, I remember what it's like to be your age, but um, that's important because you're going to be thrown into these decisions. You're going to have to decide, um, you know, what you study at, at the college if you go into college, you know. That's going to be based on what you manage to do uh, to some extent, hopefully not too much, what you manage to do in grammar school. Um, and then based on what you study, what you manage to do at college, it's going to determine, you know, whether you can get into the university you want to get into, what sort of job you can get. And, and really at these major decision points, it's impossible for you to have the clarity you will wish you had when you're further along, but you're going to have all these forces. You're going to have the people who are... Who, um, who, wish you well, who, who, who wish the best for you, your parents, um, your teachers around you. Um, but you're going to have lots of, you know, lots of those acceptance fears because those are coming from peer pressure. Those are coming from the people you're seeing alongside you. The things they're saying, they might sound sure, they're not sure. Even your parents. Your, your parents can only imagine um, to a large extent you know, what was a great decision when they were going through. Um, with, with the industries changing as, you know, you go through today, the, their best effort advice might not even be the exact thing you'd want to hear. Uh, you, should, you should hear. So, 
it's going to be tough, <laughs> but the key thing I'm trying, the key point I'm trying to make with this is, as those fears that you will feel around acceptance, um, if you allow them to, they will have you make other people happy at the expense of yourself over, scarily enough, the rest of your life. Um, so fears around acceptance are fears that we have to be afraid of. Those are fears that we have to fight. Um, but how do you fight like that? Um, well, what I found in my own life, in my own life, is that in order to fight those fears and make yourself happy in the long term, in order to lead a life that is not just about conforming to what people expect from you, uh, the most important thing is to have clear your values. Um, and that's again why I was like, you know, some of the stuff I'm hearing from from you kids is way wiser than anything I would have been thinking at that time. Um, so, so, so if you want to get clarity on your values, you ask yourself questions like, what is deeply important to you and why? Um, these might be things like supporting your family or giving back to your community, um, the community you're from, or always being honest, or setting a new standard for something important. Um, if you're thinking right now and you're unsure of what those values are, don't worry, that's totally normal. Many adults are not sure. Um, just listen to your gut feeling um, on what's right and what's wrong uh, because that feeling is very important. And over time, if you listen to it, you will develop clarity. Um, yeah, so, so that's really the main points I want to make. Um, for the remainder of my time here today, I want to give you a brief story that highlights how that fight has played out in my own life. Um, and uh, what I'm hoping is maybe something in there might help you out in your own journey. Um, so that is the brief story of my struggle taking a leap to return home to start ShopDM. Um, so as I said in the introduction, uh, ShopDM is an e-commerce platform just like Amazon, um, but it's, it's based here in Dominica. Uh, we've partnered with 110 stores, and what we do is we sell their products online. Um, so you can buy them from anywhere in the world. Um, one really great thing that ShopDM has enabled is it enables diasporans to more easily support their family at home. So um, they'll be based out in the U.S. and um, you know maybe they're they're earning you know three times what the other people in their family are earning, um, and they would otherwise only be able to send cash or barrels from them. But now you know even this morning, someone's uh, husband's is in someone's husband is in the hospital and his wife is in the US and she's sending things for him to, you know, to have him be more comfortable in there. Um, so, so that's what ShopDM is. Um, so two years in, it's starting to do well. Um, this month we're on track to process about $20,000 for our stores. Um, so I guess what's expected of me is to stand here and make this a story about um, that I planned it out perfectly, um, and that my business partner and I were geniuses, you know. Or um, maybe I should make it sound like I, I knew it was going to work out, and like I knew exactly how it was going to work out. But that wasn't the case. You all probably already saw that coming. Um, <laughs> so two and a half years ago, um, when I decided to leave my comfortable software engineering job in London, I knew I wanted to start a company here. But I didn't even know what that company was going to do. <laughs> Uh, I had built software for a few companies, um, so I knew I could do that, um, and I knew I could have a software company based on that. Um, but I didn't know what problem I was going to solve. Um, um, and yeah, by coincidence, I came back during the height of, co of COVID, and everyone needed to shop, everyone still needed to meet their needs, but um, there was no solution on how you should do that if you had to social distance, you couldn't come to town. <clears throat> um, and yeah, that's how ShopBM was born. Just the application of my skills and my business partner skills to that problem. Um, so again, yeah, right now, two years after returning, uh, the comp um, you know, again, I can make it seem like we planned it out, but we really didn't. And over the last two years, there have been lots of occasions when I've questioned whether that big jump to leave was the right decision. So imagine me at that point, making that decision to leave, right? I felt a lot of fear. That's how this, this goes back to the, the theme. Um, a series of things had gone well for me. You know, you heard them in the beginning. Um, I was in the UK, I'd studied, gotten out, I got a job. 
and I had a frame of mind, a, a set of expectations that the society had put together for what I was supposed to do in that position. Um, and I was terrified that if I did something else, I would fail. Um, I was afraid to disappoint um, everyone who had invested their hopes, their, you know, their pride, their money in me, like my parents. Um, I was afraid of people who might laugh at me and say, what boy, Mr. Go overseas and do all that just to come back here and do nonsense. <laughs> um, but there was, aside from that fear, um, there was something else as well. And that was, um, you know, that I knew I had to come back. Uh, I knew, I, I had actually known that the whole time that I was away. And that was because of my values. Um, so these are values like wanting to give back to the community that I came from, or not wanting to abandon the people important to me, or wanting to be uh, close to my family so I could support them. Um, so both the fears and the pressure for my values were present. But it was also that external, um, that external pressure. As you can imagine, you know, everyone important in my life, including my parents, tried to dissuade me from coming home. You know, they'd say things like, so you're going to leave your nice job up there and come back for what? You know, or um, my friends would say, you know, man, I'm just trying to get out. Why would you come back in? And um, very few people understand, understood why, but again, you know, that is coming purely from clarity on the values. And while there was that pressure, while there were those fears, I knew that giving in to my fears would um, have meant staying in the UK, which, by the way, is cold and gray and depressing. <laughs> Don't believe anything anyone tells you. And um, I would also, it would also have meant, um, you know, working towards something that I didn't felt, feel really mattered. Um, yeah, but most importantly, it would have meant I would have been permanently unhappy for not following my values. And that's really what I'm, I'm trying to drive in here. Like, you're going to make big decisions. You're not thinking about them because it's not natural for you to be thinking about them right now. You're thinking about what kids should be thinking about in school. But those decision points are going to come. Um, and you're going to get a whole bunch of inputs. You're going to get, um, you know, the general expectations from society. You're going to get the, 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 the well-meaning direction from your parents, from your teachers. And all of that is good, and you need to combine all of that. But if you leave out, if you, if you haven't spent the time to get clarity on what you want, you're going to end up making those decisions anyway. And then it's just luck if you land somewhere that you're actually happy. Um, yeah. So before we end, I just want to clarify. <laughs> um, so I'm not saying just ignore what everyone else is saying uh, and do whatever you feel like doing. That's definitely not what I'm saying. I'm also not saying um, take risks without thinking about them, right? So uh, for an example of you know, constructively using that input, uh, my, parents, you know, my parents were genuinely concerned about my financial security and my career, and that's why they encouraged me not to come back. Um, but they didn't know that I had been planning and preparing for five years. Um, and it's precisely because that was so important to me, because I had that clarity. Um, and that part, balancing, balancing the inputs, is one of the hardest part. You know, staying true to yourself while taking in the great advice um, that is coming from the people around you that care for you. Um, and yeah, it, 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 it usually, your elders do know a lot more than you. Looking back, my parents were actually the main reason I decided to stay in London for three years after studying. Um, and had I not done that, I would almost certainly have failed because you know, I wouldn't have learned certain key things. I wouldn't have particular resources that have been useful. So follow your values, but take useful advice um, and plan, be strategic. Uh, if things are important to you, then you, you must put more effort into them, not less. Uh, yeah, so to wrap up, there will always be fears. Um, there will always be fears around living up to expectations or fitting in. The point is you cannot let those run your life. Um, there are only two people whose expectations you need to look up, live up to, and the first is yourself at eight years old with all the hopes and dreams you had back then, and the second is yourself at 80 years old looking back at the life you lived and the decisions you took.
Thank you, Mr. Edwards. And in a nutshell, students, what he has basically said is that you should not be so comfortable in where you are that you are afraid to move out and to move into something totally new. I wish to leave with you the one additional thing, that God has not given you a spirit of fear, but he's given you what? Power, love, and a sound mind. And if you hang on to these words as you go out into this life, you will be successful young men and women. At this juncture, we wish to express our gratitude, and so we will have a few baskets being delivered to our featured speaker, to Ms. Doughton, to Dr. Blaise, and to Mrs. Steed. So Dr. Blaise, you will accept Mrs. Steed's own on her behalf. Can we give them a round of applause as we say thank you to them? And Ms. Jonkia will accept um, Pastor George's. Ms. Jonkia. Ladies and gentlemen, you've been seated for quite a while. And you are going to continue sitting. I know. But this time, you are going to be entertained by our school choir, along with Miss Lestrad, who um, is going to put on a musical presentation for you. Please make them feel welcome as they come.
kings and queens never poached monkeys. There was empires in Africa called Kush, Timbuktu, where every race came to get books to learn from black teachers who taught Greeks and Romans, Asians, Arabs, and gave them gold when gold was converted to money, it all changed. Money then became empowerment for Europeans. Alexander the Great one. He also shot at the mounds with black faces. Shot up their nose to impose what basically still goes on today. If the truth is told, the youth can grow. They learn to survive until they gain control. Nobody said you gotta be gangster foes. Breathe more, learn more, change the globe. Get our children, do your thing. Pull the hell up, lick your man, you're a king. Young princess, when they get a wedding ring. thank our school choir for this performance they did put in quite a few hours of practice but I'm a little disappointed I'm, I'm disappointed I don't know why Biggie Tupac and thing didn't graduate <laughs> oh well Biggie Tupac and Dr. Dre perhaps they're in fourth form okay uh, yeah they're in fourth okay form. they're not in fifth form okay yes you know I I I felt at the moment that that choir needed my voice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, you, you would have never forgotten it. Never. So you want to you try? I know, but I want to be. 
I know I can <laughs> be whatever. whatever. <laughs> All right, we're going to move on and we're going to have our graduates with their school song. Let's make them feel welcome as they do their last song together. It's not their school song, it's their theme song. Yes, their theme song, not the, not the school song, their last song together. Could you take your places, please? Ladies and gentlemen, get ready while our graduating class of 2022 presents Unstoppable by Sia.
We'd like to continue to acknowledge some of our benefactors and sponsors. Mr. Mervyn Anthony, Ms. Annika Andrew, Natasha James, Mr. Kurt Samuel, Mr. Robert Gist, Mr. Brent Williams, the class of 87, Father Peter Hill, Ms. Sherin Larond, Mr. Timius Garway, Ms. Atenia Tulor, Shadrach Burton, Ms. Cleopatra and Ms. Chris Skerritt, Jonathan Bellot, Gilchrist Burton, Ms. Ivona John Baptist Lugay, Dr. Idolin John, Mr. Quinton Gregoire, Mr. Stevenson Hyacinth, Busy Bubbles, Mr. James Rodney, Mr. Daniel Reed, Mr. Carlin, Carlion Peters, Mr. Augustus Etienne, Picard Limited, Mr. Colbert Bertrand, Mr. Benton Wyke, Mr. Dennison Mitchell, Mr. Daniel Riviere, Mrs. Cassia David, Ms. Kasim John, Mr. Thomas Walsh, Mrs. Jeanette Raful, Mrs. Daisy Williams, Mr. Augustus Riviere, Mr. Seymour Robinson, Mr. Alvin Anthony, Ms. Tasha Tyson, Honorable Kent Edwards, Mrs. Carlin Parillo, Mr. Charlton Bruni, Ms. Shanice Henry, Ms. Katie Julian, Ms. Floria Fontaine, Dr. Ryan Jeffrey, Mr. Uwani Simon, Resignated Designs, Mr. Derek Madero, and Ms. Taiska Williams. Thank you immensely for your contribution. I'd like to also, again, apologize for the, for the minister's address that should have been delivered here today, and the ministry offers its sincerest apologies. At this time, I'd like to invite Shantez Davis for the vote of thanks. Ladies and gentlemen, please permit me to adopt the protocol that has already been established. Good day, everyone. It is a great honor to be given this opportunity to present the vote of thanks on this memorable occasion. It is also a blessing that we are all alive and present here today, and for this we thank the Heavenly Father. We express our gratitude to the officials of the Ministry of Education, Human Resource Planning, Vocational Training, and National Excellence. Thank you for taking the time out to be present here with us today. Your presence warmed our hearts, and we will always remember that you cared enough to celebrate this momentous occasion with us. Mr. Anthony Edwards, our featured speaker and alumnus of Dominica Grammar School. Whoa, we share something in common. You played a valuable role here today, and although this sounds cliche, your words inspired us. Your words encouraged us to believe in ourselves, that as students of the Dominica Grammar School, we too can make a positive impact, not only in Dominica, but globally. I trust that every one of us will remember just a little something from what you have shared with us today. Our gratefulness is further extended to Pastor Lester George, for the spiritual upliftment this morning. May you also be blessed abundantly. To all the former students of the Dominic Grammar School, who will so willingly and generously throughout the school year and at gradu graduation, sorry. We are thankful for your generosity. Thank you for giving back to, all, to your alma mater. You continue to sow seeds into our lives and for this we are internally grateful. We hope that one day, we too will do the same. To the corporate citizens, thank you for showing your company's responsibility towards society in such tangible ways. The smallest act of kindness is worth more than the greatest intention, quoted by Oscar Wilde. To all our other benefactors, we appreciate your substantial contributions and thank and kindness towards us. Your generosity has made a difference. 
Mr. Anna Alexander and the PTA executives, although you were unable to do as much as you would have liked for us this school year because of COVID-19, we thank you immensely for what you did and continue to do for the Dominica Grammar School. Thank you all for gracing us with your presence today. Our parents and guardians, this is your moment to be proud. Thank you for believing in us, for not giving up on us, and for seeing us all through it. We know that for many of you, it was not easy, but despite the odds, you didn't give up on us, and your tenacity, your tenacity and will to see us here today have reaped great rewards. To the worship team and the students who performed, led by Mrs. Lastrad, thanks for such a beautiful rendition. Rendition, sorry. To Mrs. Francis and the decorating team, thanks for creating this exquisite ambience for us. To the principal, Mrs. Dalton and staff of our beloved school, thank you for the, guard, for the guidance you provided over the years. To our counselors, thanks for dedication towards us. Thank you, Mrs. Alisa Jean-Jacques, for our former principal. Thanks for, to continue. Thanks to our subjects teachers and those who assisted us in preparing for this ceremony today. Thanks for Alice ancillary staff. Everyone, your efforts will forever be appreciated. Now, with all this said, I believe the most important thank you goes to the graduating class of 2022. Guys, we made it. Every single student sitting here has survived the unimaginable odds. I thank you all for being brave during Hurricane Maria and for being strong post Maria upon returning school and performing to the best of your abilities. Thank you for pushing through the stress of online learning, for managing the tight SBA deadlines and for having hope even during the times we felt like giving up. Every single one of us should be proud today because we made it, we achieved it, we graduated today. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks to the media representatives, to everyone, including our online viewers, your presence here has much been appreciated. Thank you for coming, thank you for your attention. I do hope everyone has a wonderful rest of the day, and thank you. Thank you, Shantez. I'd like to invite to the stage Mr. Jack Frank, Deputy Principal, for the blessing. Testing. 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 Let us pray, if your heads bow and your eyes close. Let's get a holy hush in this place as we welcome the Holy Spirit. We know that God is good, and all the time he is good, but we know that the enemy also is raging, and is seeking whom he may devour. But great almighty, great God, we thank you. Great God, we give you all the praise and all the glory. We exalt and extol your holy name and matchless name. There is none like unto you. There is none like you. We give you thanks, O oh God. We worship you, O oh God, for who you are. We worship you, O God, for what has gone forth in this place. We exalt your holy name. All the praise and all the glory be due unto your holy name, Father. We thank you, Lord, for there is none like you and there is none like unto you. From the rising of the sun to the going down the same, your name is to be praised. So we praise and we thank you. Five years, Lord, we thank you. This year in particular, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for the many hurdles we have crossed. The many obstacles we have crossed, we thank you. And we give you praise to God. What the enemy meant to destroy and to sabotage this session or to sabotage this event, 
We thank you, Lord, that we were productive. We thank you, Lord, that we were fruitful. We thank you, Lord, that everything went well. We thank you, Lord, for this. We give you praise, O oh God. As the students go, Lord, to their various homes and dwellings and different career paths, we give them a special blessing this day in the name of Jesus because as Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 20 depicts clearly, for unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we may ever ask or think of, you can do it, Father. We combat the plan of the enemies in Jesus' name. We say to the devil that is a liar and the truth is not in him, Father. No weapon formed against his children shall prosper in the name of Jesus of Nazareth, Father. We declare victory for your blood, Lord. We declare healing for your blood. We declare miracle for your blood. We declare, Lord, that they are head and that they are not tail. We declare and decree that they shall prosper. We declare and decree that you will bless their going in and you bless their coming out. That you will anoint them, that you will sharpen them, that they will be useful, Lord, to their homes, to their families. And by extension, your country, Dominica, Father. We pray, oh God, that you bless everyone here, the staff and the student, the parent, well-wishers, and even the haters, Father. We pray against their plan today in Jesus' name. And we declare, oh God, that they will be okay. We declare safe journey back to their homes, those who are traveling far and those who are traveling close. We declare safe journey back to their home, Father. Lord, we know that the enemy is raging. He has a plan. He has a plan B, and his plan is to destroy. But today, today we declare and decree in Jesus' name that they shall be okay, Father. Take them to their respectful homes, Lord. Bless them. Cover them, Father. Bless all of us who have made it here this day, Father. Cover us, Lord, as we continue life journey, Lord. Be thou that fence of protection, Lord, around us, Father. And we declare, Lord, that when we move, Lord, no weapon formed against us shall prosper. We, de we declare, Lord, that you have given us, Lord, a spirit, Lord. You have given us, Lord, a spirit, Lord. A spirit that is, is greater, Lord. It's great. It's so great. A wonderful spirit, Lord. You have given us song, the minds of God. Help us this day. We pray, O oh God, and we thank you. And I pray in your holy name. And I pray in your immutable name. I pray, Lord, in the name that is able to do exceedingly abundantly, above all I may ever comprehend, nor ask or think of. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Please remain standing. Thank you very much, Mr. Frank. And thank you to you, the audience, for being so gracious and supportive. Um, had you not been here, our graduation would not have been a success. At this time, we will have the school song. Please stand at attention.
please remain standing as we allow our invited guests to leave. announce the departure of the graduates. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Mrs. Simon. Oh, no. 